Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 18, and I'm going to discuss product rule number 3. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstories.com. The previous video to this is number 17, where I proved the, uh, the formula for when we take the dot product, or the divergence, excuse me, the divergence of the vector field made when you multiply by the vector A by the scalar F. So that's important because I discussed the kind of thought process required. So I recommend that you watch that video prior to this. So here we've we need to take the the, the curl, we'll say, of the vector field f times uh, the vector a. So here's f times the vector a, where f is a scalar. So how do we take the the curl? Well, the curl is going to be pretty straightforward. We look at the i hat component, the j hat component, and the k hat component. Well, we have the nabla first, so we write del del x, del del y, and del del z. And then we have the, uh, the components of our vector field f times, uh, f times the vector a. So these are our components, f times a sub z here. And in order to take the cross product, we need, or the curl, we need to take the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. Now, I'm sure that you're able to do the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. It's pretty straightforward. But with all of these product rules, it's easiest if you just look at one particular dimension. So in this case, the i hat dimension. So I'm going to look at the i hat dimension. So if you do the, the, the curl, okay, you're going to get the following. You're going to get f times del del y of a sub z plus a sub z times del del y of f. You're going to have minus f del del z of a sub y minus a sub y del del z of f and this is in the i hat direction and what we're trying to do is actually see is there, is there anything, is, does this actually look like something else or is this in actual fact something else other than simply the curl so how do you do this well if you look there you're looking for symmetries, that's what you're looking for. You're looking to factorize something so you're able to get symmetry across the board and compare it with something you already know. So in the previous video I suggested, that if you look at any of them, let's say if you look at this, I suggested, well, this here is f times del del z of a sub y. So immediately we're getting um, something I would suggest is the scalar function f multiplied by something else. So what we need to work out is what is this del del z a sub y? Now, you'll see in a minute what it is. So just to, you know, to try something for the start, let's factorize the terms of f. So we have f outside of del del y a sub z minus del del z a sub y. And this is in the i hat direction. And of course, we have plus the other terms, a sub z del del y of f. And we're going to have minus a sub y uh, del del z of f. Okay, and this is also, of course, in the i-hat direction. So, now, let's analyze this. Does this look like anything? a sub y, del, uh, sorry, del del z, a sub z, excuse me, del del y, a sub z, minus del del z, a sub y. That looks to me like a cross product, or a curl in this case. That looks to me like the curl. So, is that the curl of a? If you go and write out the components for the curl of a, you'll find in actual fact that is exactly what it is. So, that's the curl of a. So if you extend this to three dimensions, half of the four terms in each of the dimensions, or two of the four terms, correspond to the curl of A. So what I'm going to do now is rewrite this as the curl of A. That's the curl of, we'll say, A sub x, because at the moment we're only in one, one dimension. But of course, if you extend it to three dimensions, you get the curl of A full stop. Now you need to ask yourself, what is the remaining term? What is that? Now, in a similar fashion, let's look at this. We seem to be multiplying components here. We seem to have, um, yeah, we seem to have, you know, we have our, our components here. We have del del y of f, del del z of f. What we're missing is del del x of f. So how do we, you know, how do we kind of account for the fact that we don't have a del del x of f? Okay, well, how we do this is we, we actually know that what we have here is we have a, the vector field a, with the, we'll say, take the cross product of vector field A with the gradient of F. Okay, so that's what we have here. So we notice here, this is, the, this is definitely going to be the gradient of F. But in the i-hat component, we have 
a sub z and a sub y. So you should know that when you're taking a cross product in the i direction, you will, you will never have a component of a sub x. So this seems to me that we have, we have because we have y and z components in the i hat direction. So that looks to me like a curl. And if you take the, the gradient of f and take the, the, the cross product between a and the gradient of f, this is exactly what you'll get. So what it seems to me here is that we also have we have um, we have a with the cross product of the gradient of f. So simply, when you extend it to three dimensions, what you'll get is that the the we'll say the the curl of the vector field made when you multiply the scalar by a scalar f by the vector field a is f outside of the curl of a minus a. Uh, we'll say the cross product of A and F times, uh, sorry, the gradient of F. What am I doing here? The gradient of F. Okay, the gradient of F. Note, of course, the gradient of F gives you back a vector field. Okay, and that all hinged, I suppose, on working out what the, uh, I would say this one was easy, that was pretty easy, but it worked out on, on, on working out what A sub Z del del Y of F minus A sub Y del del Z of f is in the i hat direction, and just just to I, I suppose um, just to do it for for completeness, we have in the i hat direction we expect that a cross product or a curl will have no z component x components will have no x components. In this case, we have no x components. The two terms I'm highlighting now, they look to me like the gradient of f. So then it suggests that if we the whole thing then looks like the, uh, the cross product between A, the vector field A, and the gradient of F. And that's exactly what it is. So if you extend it to three dimensions and you do all the i hat, j hat, and k hat components, all you'll do is, is um, I suppose, prove explicitly in actual, what you have. But by symmetry, of course, we know the answer is, is that. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com. Thanks.